And now the Wits Game Show, this week's game, Lesser Known Moments in History. Margaret Cho is a person with George Washington tattooed on one knee and Abraham Lincoln on the other. You are an expert historian. We will give you a moment in history. You give us a little backstory on the event. Flesh it out a little. Okay. Josh Ritter, we happen to know that in college you created your own major called American History through narrative folk music. So <laughs> naturally we'll be asking you to sing a few verses from a song that celebrates the historical moment. All right. Both contestants will have the option to declare, turn the tables. Now, the way that works is before the start of a round, either contestant can yell, John, I'd like to turn the tables. And at this point, the roles are switched. Margaret will have to provide the song from the era. She is free to use any instruments or band members she happens to find on the stage. <laughs> Josh gives us the backstory. I will declare a winner after each round. My decisions, as always, will be unfair and capricious. <laughs> Ready? Too bad. Here we go. We've heard about a mutual dislike between Thomas Jefferson and John Adams. Margaret Cho, what was at the heart of that dislike? I think it had something to do with Mary Todd's Ouija board because they were trying to contact Lincoln's dead son and Mary Todd was depressed and Dolly Madison kept coming over and it was the real housewives of the White House. And it was all really unpleasant. And you know how these first ladies can be. They had a garden, they were fighting and they were trying to consult the Ouija board for help and there was just no help whatsoever. And that spilled over into, uh, into Adams. Into Civil War. Okay. <laughs> Josh Ritter, uh, I, I know you have a song up your sleeve that tells uh, a story of this. I, 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 I've, heard, I've heard Margaret's uh, theories many times. Um, the, uh, the actual fact is that we have scraps of song from the 1820s, which don't go back as far as we need them to, but provide a hint. <laughs> John Adams hated all Italians. <laughs> Tommaso Jefferson was one. That's all we have. Wow. I think I have to give that to Josh Ritter. That was strong. All right, moving on to the next round. Margaret Cho, tell us about the great maple syrup tragedy of 1872. Well, the problem was that there was a great pancake shortage, and this depleted a lot of the waffles coming over from Belgium. And so, with this incredible American tragedy happening with carbohydrates from Europe, and all these people who were very hungry, we needed a solution. So people were just downing maple syrup, just really like they were doing shots. And um, it, it really, it just, it, you know, it, it depleted our forests. John Muir was trying to protest, but then um, he was eventually mowed down by a um, bulldozer, which went to create the first International House of Pancakes. So this, this was something that I, I have a lot of suffering about it. I, I actually uh, prefer um, bagels and lox myself for breakfast. She's strong. She's bringing the John that's right. Muir. That's a, that's a solid performance by Margaret Cho right there. Josh Ritter, over to you. All right. It's well known that cow parsnip looks much like hemlock. A lot of people don't know that one of our, one of our extinct indigenous trees, the marple tree, the maple tree, the maple syrup tastes like maples. Maple syrup tastes like maples They look the same, don't be fooled though One of them, but one tastes like a poison egg <laughs> Margaret Cho takes the round <laughs> All right, we're moving on. The, the drama builds. Still, nobody has called Turn the Tables just yet. <laughs> moving on to the next round. It's a showdown. It's a standoff. <laughs> Margaret Cho, tell us about the rise to power of terrible, wonderful Brad. Turn the tables. She's turning the tables, everybody.
Margaret, would you, as the as the table turner, would you like to go first or second? Um, I can go. I can go first. The rise can to I power. Have a, can I have a? Um... Okay, I'm easier as a sit down player. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm look at your notes here, Josh. <laughs> Brad was bad in a lot of ways, but he had a terrible fall. Brad didn't mean it, but he really meant it all. Brad will say sorry, he'll revise the truth somehow. Brad is a liar, but I will forgive him now. Brad, I'm not sorry. Brad, I believe in you. Brad, I'm going to win this round if it's the last thing that I But I forgive him, and I will remember all that I want to. I think that I won this round, because nobody thought that I could play this tune. <laughs> OK, pretty strong, pretty strong. I. Uh... I like your singing. I, I like your expressed desire to win the round. <laughs> the rest of it was largely meaningless, but let's see how you do when Josh Ritter tells us the rise to power of, when Josh Ritter tells us about the rise to power of the terrible, uh, terrible, wonderful Brad. Tell us, Josh. It's a difficult name to it pronounce. It was it's a, a difficult era. Its original Welsh was almost incomprehensible. No uh, vowels at all, as I recall. There was, there was lots of L's and W's, and, and like, and, and uh, for he was Welsh, terrible, wonderful Brad, comes down to us. Um, that's the name that uh, Longfellow gave him. But uh, <laughs> going way back to when uh, just after the Romans had left uh, the British Isles, and, and the Britons and the Pikes were scattered across the islands and mostly throwing rocks at each other, there arose a man named Uther Pendragon, and he... <laughs> United the tribes, several of them and some other ones, and uh, and and build a round table, and then had a several son. of them and some other ones. Some other guys. <laughs> there was other people there. They were looking. All they right. were looking from the side. Sure. And and he had two sons. Of course, the the one that goes down mostly in legend as Arthur, uh, and, and which I think Margaret mentioned briefly in her song, although. And then uh, his other son, <laughs> terrible, wonderful Brad who wasn't actually, we don't think, all that bad. There's many uh, instances of him giving mercy uh, to some of the folks. I'm calling but this round a tie. Both sides get a point. <laughs> Which means that the next one will be a tiebreaker. This is to decide it all. Uh, Margaret Cho, tell us about George Washington's problem with squirrels. Well, George Washington had a problem with squirrels because they kept trying to bore into his teeth and work their way down his throat. And the problem with most of America's founding fathers is that they didn't have a gag reflex. So they were trying to burrow down, you know, and he could not tell a lie. So it just, it just was, a bit, it was bad. That sounds bad. Yeah. Gosh. Vivid. Josh Ritter, give us a song about Washington's problem with squirrels. Squirrels infested George Washington's mouth. At Valley Forge, he couldn't get the words out. So Paul Revere made him a new silver tooth. Now werewolves all stay away from him, too. <laughs> 
The winner of the Wits Game Show is Josh Ritter, ladies and gentlemen. Well earned.